Hey everyone, this is Elias from RevMatch Media, and today, yeah, it's kind of obvious what we are going to be reviewing. So we have the 2021 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 4XE. So I said it's obvious, but it's not quite obvious what this really is. But then it kind of is, it, it hints at little things. So let's take a look at what's so special about this 4XE part of that name. Let's get started. So we get started in the front and of course it's iconic Jeep, but with this one, it's a little bit different. We have the LED lighting package here. Now this is typically an option, but with the 4XE, it's actually part of that trim. So you're not paying for it up front, um, but it is, well, you are paying for it, but it's not an itemized or an option. It's already included in the price. So we have that, which definitely, as you saw, it's a bright, clean system. I like the way of the, the, it looks as well, as well as the LED turn signals we have here, which are really nice. And with this being the Rubicon, we do have the higher fenders. You can get these colored. Um, typically, I would have liked them to be colored, but with this red, I think it looks nice. I like the little breakup of the color and it's not just big red amount. <laughs> so we have that. And this one does have the steel uh, bumper option. So that's what we have here. Do you have to get it? No. Um, if you're planning on modifying your Jeep, don't bother with this. Go ahead and save your money and go after market if you're going to go after market anyways. But yeah, if you're not, this is great. These guys, these end caps come off if you're off-roading to, you know, help with ground clearance or just with clearance really uh, with this, or to actually, it's easier to grab onto a rock when you don't have this in front. So we have that. Now, what sets this apart is these guys. With the Rubicon, we have the red hooks, but with the 4XE, we actually have blue hooks and we'll get to what that means once we get under the hood but yeah i mean it looks great it, it's it's a beautiful jeep and up here we have the nice sculpted hood with the openings and we have the 4xe specific graphics up here now let's take a look under the hood and see why this has the 4xe name on it we get under the hood and this is my favorite part about a Jeep. You're able to open up the hood all the way up. Um, if you need to perform any maintenance things on it, it makes it a lot easier to, to really get in there. Now, this little guy has been one of my favorite things to play with. This is the Axial SC24 or S SCX24, one of those, but it's been a nice little crawler jeep this is actually a rubicon as well it's in yellow like the one we've reviewed before uh, with the hard top as well but this little guy and this share something similar this is actually a hybrid system so this has a battery just like this guy has a battery now it's not just all power all electric power though because it's a hybrid we do still have the 2.0 liter turbocharged inline four and together, these guys are cranking out 375 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. That's a lot of torque. That's more than the diesel Sahara that we test drove. And let me tell you, that amount of torque was a lot. The fact that you're adding even more is awesome. I love it and you have the added horsepower as well. It's definitely a nice combination. I love the 2.0 on its own. And now that we have hybrid technology backing it up, it's been amazing. Now, one of the biggest things I'm a little eh about hybrids is the switching. Switching from gas to, to electric or electric to gas, nothing. This thing is so smooth so smooth and with the automatic eight speed transmission this thing is the definition of smooth it, it's i was super surprised at this even with the big tires that this has the ride has you know the power delivery has been great and it just 
it just goes to show you that when you, and, and for it being a first gen hybrid, it, it really was done well. It really was done well to, again, deliver a seamless experience. Like if you didn't, you didn't even know this was a hybrid, we didn't, we covered the, the gauges and everything, you wouldn't notice, except holy hell, there's a lot of power behind this. That would be the only thing. But yeah, it, it's been a really, really great system. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these wheels and tires. We get to the wheel and tire package and again, just Jeep. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's, it screams Jeep. So we have a nice big tire. Uh, we have a 17 inch wheel with this one uh, and it is wrapped on a 285 70 uh, BF Goodridge. These are great. Um, I thought they were gonna be noisy because typically you're, you know, with a big tire like this, it can be noisy, but it, it was actually pretty good. It wasn't too bad. And we were doing a lot of driving around town and on the highway because it's the Rubicon, which is kind of like an off-road vehicle for the road, as opposed to the more standard Jeeps like the Sahara, which is more of a city Jeep that you can take off-road. You're you're gonna sacrifice some of the stuff, but with that hybrid system in here, that battery, for some reason, it felt a lot better. It, I, I feel like the battery really distributed the, the weight on the Jeep and it's what it needed because we've driven the yellow Rubicon and man, I was just tugging at the wheel constantly to keep it straight, but not with this. This felt significantly better, which is, nice it's nice that was kind of one of my biggest things uh biggest complaints with the jeep was the, the drivability was it's a jeep thing yes i understand but it was kind of getting to the point where i i if i wanted to have that off-road vehicle that i can drive on the street um i was gonna have to sacrifice significantly not with this so this is definitely a a, a better system together and yeah i mean it did the job you know it's a little bit wet today and no issues with traction um but yeah oh of course you have the nice little easter egg here on the wheel well uh let's take a look at the side and see what we have there we get to the side and um yeah it's a jeep again it's very it's very obvious it's a jeep and a couple of things with this so we get started in the front with this being the rubicon uh we do get an additional clearance in the fender well so they are a little bit taller here which makes the jeep look taller nice and nice and tall good for obviously off-roading so we have that we have the rubicon badging here uh to show off yeah he went a little bit extra for that off-road capability or those off-road options now with this uh the rubicon is actually in outlined in blue and again we have our charger so we have our battery charger here where you can hook up again your outlet from from your house uh, or into a charger out and about so it's definitely a nice little thing we we didn't test it out because we had we live in a third floor apartment but you don't need to charge it with the thing because again that regeneration those those options you have to recharge your battery was actually really good uh, again, just because it's electric and it's the new thing and it's not gas, it's not rugged. No, that's not the case with this Jeep because it is, does have the trail rated badge here still. And with this, again, we have the, the soft top up here. Um, and yeah, this guy's, this one back here is plastic. These are glass, which is nice, but yeah. I feel out of all the options, the best one is their automatic automatic sunroof option or automatic top, which makes it way easier to open and close, especially when we have weather like this that's not quite predictable. Um, yeah, we were supposed to have really sunny skies right now, and obviously it's not. So if I would have taken this off, yeah, um, this is probably the second best one. Uh, maybe tied with the hardtop. Reason why the hardtop is you take them off, it's very easy to take off, but you're having to um, take up space in your trunk if you're on the go. Now, with this one, it's, you know, you take it off, but you're, you're kind of with soft windows. So just be aware, and the, the 
uh, electric one is probably the best. It's the most expensive one. So it is gonna be the most expensive one, but I definitely feel it's worth it. So we have that. And again, this color is nice. I didn't think I was gonna like the blue accents on the red, but it really, really stands out and it looks really nice on all the badging. Now, this guy does have a key fob and it does have their proximity sensor so that is an option and it's an option that is a must you definitely want to get that when you get your jeep so that when you have your keys in your pocket we can do the keys in the pocket test and see if it unlocked and then i can pull yeah <laughs> yes thank you thank you this is what all manufacturers need to do if you have uh, unfortunately this one charges you for it but i think it's a well worth option this one does have the the guardrail protectors here the little protectors there but i definitely feel this needs a step especially for myself i'm not the tallest of guys my wife did struggle a little bit um so a nice sidestep which again this one just didn't have it but there's tons and tons of options whether that's from jeep themselves or from aftermarket options but yeah i mean it's it's great we didn't take off the doors because again we don't have any space in my apartment and i'm not gonna lug these these doors three flights of stairs up now let's go ahead and take a look at what we have in the back okay so we get to the back and yeah, check out that. You know, you just gotta, you just gotta. <laughs> so we get to the back and we can see it's a box. It really is. <laughs> but we take a look at a couple of things. First is we have the nice taillights uh, LED in the back. We have the 4XE badge down here. We have your your tow hooks down here, your grab points um, in blue. I'm, I'm really, really loving this blue. I don't know if, I would option this Jeep out as a blue Jeep because I think these little guys would really get lost. So I think the red is a nice option. Now we have the spare tire in the back and we have the backup camera right on the spare tire and it worked really well. You, uh, you have the option of actually turning it on while you're moving, which is a nice touch. A lot of, a lot of manufacturers don't let you have that on while you're driving. It was a nice touch, especially when you see the jerk kind of behind you a little too close, <laughs> but it's nice to have. Actually, it was really good when my kids see it because of having to be in the middle, you'll see why later. Um, he kind of blocks my, my rear view mirror. So it was nice to have that turned on so that I could see what is behind me. So nice little touch. And again, we have the, the proximity sensor you can see it immediately as I touch that it tries to unlock which is good it has the buttons on here like it does in the front passenger and driver seat it does not have them in the back which okay but you know it would be nice to have them on all four but we do have the option of locking back here now my favorite time key fob time so with this key fob we have my favorite so lock and unlock obviously but we have the two times press that little guy two times and it does the remote start we'll get to that soon but just wanted to show you nice little key nice and rugged as well you know got a nice little weight to it but we go ahead and we open this up and again we have a fairly good amount of space back here my only thing is because this is the soft top you do have to do a little bit more work with the hard tops and the and the electric one it is just a glass rear window so this is a plastic so with the glass you literally just lifted it up convenient like i said that is definitely the way to go go either hard top actually uh okay <laughs> again go with the automatic um or i think I, this is maybe a close second just because of the fact that again if you don't have a house to store those big panels for the hard top then this is going to be your better option but this was actually fairly easy to undo it has these kind of little like plastic you just kind of push them in there they're very easy to put on very easy to take off as well which was a nice little thing we don't have to take off all the things but i'll go ahead and undo that and then this has like a little 
well, not little, it's actually a pretty decent bar that you just kind of pull on and there you go. You're open, you're open. And like I said, you have a fair amount of space back here for your groceries, for your off-roading gear. Let me go ahead and close it, show you guys. It's not that big of a deal, but when you've been spoiled with the other option, it's almost like uh, you really wanna just spend the extra money on that. So again, it's just a matter of hooking that up. Yeah, it takes a bit to kinda find there, but once you find it, it's, it's really the trick of getting one side in and then the other side is fairly easy. And I've heard complaints about the previous systems that this Jeep had, and apparently they were not that great. So the fact that this has this is a nice little touch. And there you have it. Sorry, uh, I wasn't putting the, the bar in correctly, but now that I got that and I can close this, we can now use my key fob. Let's see uh, how it sounds. Um, I'm not hearing it. And you're really not going to hear it because again, this is the hybrid system. A couple of things. Yeah, you definitely wanna have, you wanna keep an ear out for the beeps, the, the honks, because that's gonna determine whether, hey, did the Jeep turn on or not? And you probably can hear it. Let me take, let me go to the front. You can probably hear that, but that's the fans really running and the electric system really kind of going. And that's because, yeah, it's, it's on the battery mode right now. Because it's on the battery, it's just, yeah, it's having to turn on that part. So that's why I said, just be careful when you are turning it off, make, turning it on, make sure that you hear the beeps so that you know it's running. If you don't hear the beeps, you probably weren't in range or you probably didn't press it. <sighs> yeah, I would probably like the engine to turn on to warm up the engine because after all, that's what we're doing. But the important thing is the inside is getting cooled down, especially on these days that we've been hitting 100 degrees almost every day of the summer or spring that we're in. I don't know, but yeah, it's a lot better obviously this is a necessity having that turn on and again my favorite thing i don't need an app i don't need a subscription you have this and you're good to go well we're good to go so let's hop in and go for a ride you go for a ride in the wrangler forex e and you're probably thinking it was going to be a little bit different and it is but the majority of things is it's still a jeep it's a hybrid jeep right so a couple of things, we'll, we'll go through the, the standard things. I've already re reviewed a Jeep. I've already reviewed a Wrangler Rubicon. So for more details, you can go to that video, but I'll just kind of go through the basic stuff here. So we get in the seats and these are the leather wrapped seats. And this has the special blue stitching on them. They are comfortable. They're comfortable. They're big, plush, you know, they're, they, you kind of kind of it's a it's a lazy boy it's a big lazy boy but it's good it's good it's very comfortable as far as the seat goes you can position it only thing though is they are manual so you have to adjust them with manual things but they're comfortable they work really well we get to the steering wheel and the steering wheel is your regular jeep steering wheel nothing different except for that blue stitching that blue stitching looks so good in this i love it i really really love it so you also have my favorite now no longer fca but stellantis 
Uh, I believe I said that right. But we have these controls in the back, which are great. You can change the track. You can raise or lower the volume right in the back, which is nice because when you're holding this, you're not having to play thumb war, so to speak, with this. So that's a nice thing. And it's nice and big. It's comfortable. We get to the infotainment cent center or infotainment system, and this is the upgraded system definitely go for this smaller screen uh, in fact anything maybe even smaller than this it's a little bit difficult so this is at the minimum and unfortunately this is the maximum size for this screen but i understand it works extremely well you connect four i did get spoiled with you connect five in that uh pacifica that we in the pinnacle that we got to review and take out to go uh we took dakota not actually drive it but use it as a work vehicle but you connect five was so so good and i was really really hoping that they would put the connect you connect five and you connect five you connect is basically you know still infotainment system it works extremely well and four was really good unbelievable Five is out of this world good. So yeah, I just wish it had the five, but just a nice big screen, really responsive. Didn't have any issues with, with touch. And yeah, that's really the only way you can control it. So there's no controls on the steering wheel other than obviously you're controlling the volume and, and the next track situation, but there's tons of options there. The big thing with this, and I love, was one of the things that I hated in the yellow Rubicon that we test drove, and that is the dashboard. This area here had like an anodized red. That's great if your Jeep is red, which this one is, but it wasn't, it was yellow. And it just kind of looked like mustard and ketchup. It just didn't look right. I didn't like it. That was one of my biggest things that I wish that matched whatever your Jeep color was. There's covers for it. I was definitely looking if there were covers and there are. So I definitely am happy to see that this has the nice black leather cover with again, that blue stitching. So because we have the Rubicon, we have lots of off-road options. We can actually lock the rear as well as the front and we also have the sway bar disconnect so it gives you more articulation so fancy word for you can make sure that all your wheels are down on the ground and it doesn't have that tendency of having one wheel up which means typically less traction so we have that again a rubicon function that's why you buy the Rubicon trim for those off-road functions. And then we have the auxiliary. So you have lights, you have any anything you want to outfit this Jeep with and it needs electrical power. That's what those guys will let you do. So it does have those four auxes and it's really cool. You can actually program them uh, whether it's it's a button that you press like a toggle on and off or if it works like a hold down kind of button so nice little thing right there now we come down here and again we have the transfer uh case setting so we have the the two high four uh high auto we have the um four low this thing can can crawl like crazy you can definitely get this thing crawling now let's talk about what this is what makes this different the 4xe what why is this different than your other jeeps it, it's not much different so the ride it's still a jeep it's still gonna have the jeep wobble especially in the rubicon you feel it more in the rubicon as opposed to the sahara that we've driven before and this one is a little bit different though because this is a hybrid and we have that battery pack in here it definitely felt more grounded it felt more grounded it felt more stable it really did it, it's 
it's crazy, but this definitely feels better than your standard Rubicon. The, the standard Rubicon or the, the non-hybrid Rubicon, it did feel a little top heavy, but this feels a lot more grounded and it makes it for a significantly better overall drive. It's crazy. It's crazy how much just a little bit of weight transfer can do that. So it definitely was the great thing to have in this. I think it needed that stability down low to help with the everyday drive. Granted, I'm still fighting the wheel a little bit, not as much as the standard one or the non-hybrid, but it definitely helps with the ride. The other thing as well is, again, we have those little blue accents, nice look to it. It definitely helps out. Even with red, which usually blue and red, ah, the, the, yeah, <laughs> this still looks good. So I love that. Now let's talk about the engine, the 2.0 liter turbocharged with hybrid. We're looking, I believe it was about 200 or something horsepower. I apologize. I'll put the numbers below. Uh, but the torque, I remember, the torque is over 400 pound feet of torque. Very, you know, more than what the diesel had. And should you get this over the diesel? I think so. I think so. I, I really like the, the way that Jeep has set up this 4XE. Now, which one would I get? I would probably get the Sahara. Personally, I, I love the off-road thing. I don't think I would be going really off-road. It would probably be used more for everyday use. So the the fact that, sorry, there was another Jeep uh, JK, I think it was, yeah. So every day I would prefer the Sahara. I don't need the really great features of locking the differentials and that stuff or the front one and the sway bar disconnect which really sets this apart more as a significantly more off-road but the sahara is great the sahara 4xe is probably my sweet spot because it has the the not so rugged aspect of the drivetrain and it's a little bit better for every day plus that hybrid system that this has but this is great. If you want something and, and, and you're gonna be taking this out on the trail, go with this. You're gonna want those, those functions to lock the differentials. So when we're talking about the power, man, this thing has it. I mean, the 2.0 was peppy enough and I love the power delivery when we test drove it before, but this is really, really good. This is really good with the hybrid system. Now this whole time that we've been driving there's different modes on here i'm going to switch this to the e-hybrid so the e-hybrid kind of tells you what the hell is going on under underneath and we have right now we're just showing the power flow there's different modes we have with this we have the hybrid we have electric and e-save now the hybrid is that set it and forget it setting it will do everything for you. It will balance the gas engine as well as the electric motors and the battery power. So again, it's really smart. I love that setting. It's been incredible. It's been incredible. It's seamless. It is seamless. It's not the typical, you know, click on or off. It has been like kind of like ease into it kind of situation which is what you want in a hybrid especially in a first gen hybrid it's insane for this to be so smooth typically you get like i said those on and off switches of the of the gas engine but not in this it's really really good what i notice in the hybrid is that when you're at a stoplight, it will obviously turn off the engine. You, you barely notice it. And when you start off, it uses the electric power. And it uses the electric power because typically when you're at a stop and you accelerate, that's when you're gonna consume the most amount of gas. So it's pretty good at kind of getting the Jeep 
rolling and then should you stomp on it <laughs> it will wake up the gas engine but again it does it in a very smooth way unbelievable the electric only is really really weird <laughs> and i love it i love it because it's so silent it's so silent in the sense of you're driving a jeep and you're not hearing the engine and it's just surreal it's really a surreal you're expecting rugged rugged usually doesn't explain or rugged usually has a negative connotation of not being refined and you're you know the jeep does this it's not 100 percent refined it's got some things it's got those jeep quirks it's a jeep thing but it definitely the electric was really cool at the fact that the jeep is moving but you're not hearing an engine you hear everything else because yeah especially with the soft top it's not the most insulated which is probably why i would definitely opt for either the hard top or the the um electric sun sunroof option reason why is because again when you're in full electric you hear every single little thing now i'm perfectly fine the weird thing is i've driven the audi oh gosh i forgot the name but their electric suv i hated it i hated it because again i'm in a more refined space and i was expecting complete silence and i kept hearing the steering rack i kept hearing the steering rack when i would turn and I, in this if i heard the steering rack i could care less <laughs> it's just it's that thing it's that irrational thing with jeeps the rational love sometimes of like this i'll be honest it's not the most ideal vehicle uh, you know it's it, it's it's not perfect but you love it you love it you really do so again i know i'm going long on the electric but that's what this is it's really really good in the electric mode only 25 miles uh for range i understand yeah it's small would i like to see more maybe maybe some future technology that would help with the range of this but it's nice to have if you want to go full electric now what i'm currently in is e-save so i'll push the button here and the e-save is gonna do something really really nice so it says the e-save preserves the current hybrid battery level for later use and may increase battery charge levels battery save reclaims energy from braking and coasting battery charge may also use the engine to charge the battery so that is in the mode i am currently in and with being in that mode there's two options you have the battery save which will not consume any any of the battery it'll just save it for a later time or you can do battery charge so it's more active in actually recharging the battery right now we have it in battery charge because yeah we've been using the battery up a lot so it was when i started the car this morning it was at net less than one percent so it did need a little bit of charge and we've been driving for about an hour or so and i have been able to regenerate it at 19 percent so that's what we're at right now the reason why i've been able to regenerate it so well especially on these twisty roads which obviously are going up and down is we have something down here we have the max regeneration turned on so typically if you don't have that on and you accelerate but then brake like it said there it will regenerate and you'll see the needle just kind of go down to charge so when you're braking it does that for you except that when you have max regeneration turned on it kind of works think of it as a hot wheels or yeah what was the those electric little um power wheels there you go think of this as a big power wheel jeep which obviously we always love that jurassic park power wheels you guys know what i'm talking about so it works like that what i mean by that is you accelerate to go but when you let off the gas it's gonna start to pull back and brake and that's what this is doing 
So when it does that, it actually goes ahead and starts charging because it's in max regeneration and it figures when you're off the gas, you're gonna wanna brake or you're gonna wanna slow down. And that's what it's doing. So it does get a little bit to get used to. It does take some time to get used to, but once it does, it's actually nice. It's like an additional cruise control setting, I would almost say, because I don't have to switch my foot off the brake, off to the brake. I can just let off the gas and it will start braking. And it does it in a gentle way. So it's not like, whoa, you know, it's like really, you know, moving you forward, but it does give you a good amount of braking. And uh, again, from between that point that I just mentioned, we're now at 21%. So we did, did go up a good amount. Um, I mean, not a, mile, a lot, but it helps. The regeneration helps out a lot. This, I would warn you that because you're having this on, you are having to be on the gas a little bit more because if you get off the gas, it's not gonna let you coast. So it's immediately gonna pull back power. So just be aware, it is gonna consume a little bit more gas because now you're having to be on the gas a little bit more. So we have that, but I wanted to just kind of have that on and I will switch over to hybrid. And I wanna, I wanna show you guys how this is. Right now, it's on hybrid. I am not, the engine turned off. We didn't really hear anything. We didn't really feel anything either when it switched over. And you can see the consumption of what it's doing there. It's nice. Is it loud in here? Yeah, but that's just deep loud. <laughs> it's just the volume of, of what you get in a Jeep. It's normal. It's not, it's nothing, you know, it, it's bearable. And again, it is just, it's doing its thing. Like I said, it's in electric right now, consuming that. And you have the different charging options. Jeep has that, you know, in-home system that you can put in, which is nice. The big question, the gas mileage. Now this is rated at 49 MPGE and 20 miles per gallon on the gas combined city and highway driving. I, I don't have, I'll be honest with you, I don't have a good reading on this. Reason why is because I've been testing all those different settings. I wanted to see what it's like. Right now I do have a 17.8 mile per gallon average. I know, I know it's not the measures they mention, but again, I've been playing with them and I, that's what I have right now. But when I was kind of more on a controlled, okay, this is kind of what I'm gonna do. I was able to see a good 20, 20 to about 22 miles to, to the gallon. Again, I'm still kind of feeling this out and seeing what would be the ideal setting. I would say if you are in a lot of stop and go, so this is kind of be my, kind of my assessment of what modes would be best. If you are in a lot of stop and go, use the full regeneration or max regeneration because it's gonna do the braking for you. It's gonna help, you know, you're moving forward and you're, you're stopping. And I would say, put it in hybrid because that's going to use the battery, but as well as regenerate it as quickly as possible. So you're getting, you know, the off the line with the battery, but down to a zero stop on, you know, benefiting the battery. That's what I would say is the ideal thing. And again, I'm doing this in a real world scenario. I live on the third floor of an apartment building. There was no way in hell I was going to be able to run an extension cord from the third floor down to the Jeep. I know I was going to get a letter from my front office building and tell me, what are you doing? So again, something to take into consideration. I, I think the ideal for stop and go traffic is definitely the hybrid in the full regeneration. If you're doing a lot of highway, I would say uh, turn off the regeneration because when you are, you know, up to speed and if you don't want to 
you know, and, and if they're slowing down or, you know, highway scenarios, if you get off the gas, it's going to immediately pull the, the Jeep back. It's going to want to break it, a uh, brake. And then when you accelerate, there go all the benefits. So on a highway scenario, if you're just, you know, little traffic, you want to take off the regeneration. For the e-save, I would say use it when you're on the highway. Use it on the highway and that way you're saving the battery, whether you want it to charge or not. Um, yeah, I would probably on the highway with little traffic, e-save, consume the battery at a later time and stop and go traffic where it really, really benefits this vehicle, this Jeep and set it to charge the battery. So that way when you're, when you're braking at a higher speed, it's going to go ahead and put the charge indicator at the largest amount because now the brakes are working the most and can regenerate at a higher level or charge at a higher level. So that's really my breakdown of, and then electric, if you just want to be, you know, have some fun on the trails and you are wanting to go ahead and show off that, you know, you have the option of yeah, not making a single no. Actually, no. Can't say single noise because it does make some noise on the uh, thing. Oh yeah, another gladiator. You know, gotta give him the Jeep wave. So that's the thing. You definitely want to have this in electric to show off. This that electric mode is really good. Just be aware. It's a little weird. It's a little weird because you're 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 waiting. You're wanting to feel the engine slightly shift. You know, not shift, but just kind of vibrate. Um, yeah, it's a different experience. But guys, yeah, that's the Forex E. That's the Forex E. Now, who's this for? Is this a Jeep? Like many of those real hardcore you know jeep lovers yes this is the most jeep jeep <laughs> this is the most jeep wrangler ever i think the 392 is nice nice big v8 but yeah i think this is probably one of the best jeeps i've driven and i've driven more i've driven the gladiators i've driven different trims you know with that so I think this is for everyone. And I may be wrong, but I believe there were some government incentives for tax things. Um, if there is, this will be included in the video. I'll have to research that. And you know, you definitely wanna check with your local state taxes, that situation to see if you get a rebate. Because the extra difference I believe actually makes up in the rebate. So. It's almost a no brainer. You want to go for this. And again, it's the Jeep. It's everything Jeep, but better. And that's what ultimately you want a Jeep to be. You want the Jeep to always be a better vehicle. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. I've had a blast in this. I really, really, really want to get this. My wife really, really wants to get this. My kid loves this. <laughs> well remember guys i hope you enjoyed my review like i said i've had a blast remember to subscribe like all those youtube things and remember find the right gear see ya